So an appeals court lowering former President Donald Trump's bond in that civil fraud case. Uh, he will still have to pony up about $175 million within 10 days' time. He says he'll do it promptly and he'll do it with cash. Uh, but the news comes that he's on the verge of making billions after his social media company, True Social, goes public. Kevin O'Leary now, chairman of O'Leary Ventures, with us now. And let's take it one at a time. First, on the federal appeals lowering. He just shot out a, a message saying Trump Tower remains mine. Huge victory. Uh, how do you see it, Kevin? I look at this from a completely different point of view. Let's go up to 30,000 feet and talk about the American economy, our ability to remain number one worldwide, and most importantly, attracting foreign capital to invest in America. And the concept uh, and why that happens and has for over 175 years is in our Constitution, property rights are mentioned over 25 times. So this is very important because if you're going to go over to the Middle East or to D Denmark or Europe, where I'm going next week to raise money for American projects, notably data centers, um, when they give $3 billion to you, they want to know their property rights are protected. And so what was happening in New York was extremely scary. And I have to admit to you, in the last two weeks, I kept telling them before our meetings, don't worry, the adults will step in. Something will happen to advance the appellate process. Your rights are protected. Imagine me telling foreign investors that as they watch this roll out in New York. Thank goodness the adults came to the rescue. And now we have a process beginning, a 60 plus percent reduction in this infraction fee. And that really should be getting more to what's balanced. Trump assuring everybody he has the cash to back the bond. These are good advancements towards keeping the stable message about the American brand as the number one economy to invest in. All right, guys. So in this continuation of the mainstream liberal media being upset about Trump's business fraud trial not going the way that they hoped that it would go. We have to talk about Jon Stewart, who has returned back to doing what he does best, which is to push propaganda for the Democrat Party while pretending to be some enlightened centrist comedian that he's not. OK, he has returned to the failing Daily Show to try to roast Trump and to basically go on these Trump deranged rants before the election okay we all know that he's trying to cook the election for joe biden this is why they brought him back to the daily show they had a rotation of hosts like for example people like charlamagne the god who were not really funny and nobody really cared what they had to say about uh politics and they got desperate right they got so desperate that again they bought back john stewart who is now attacking businessman investor kevin o'leary because he is defending Trump when it comes to the possibility of woke deranged New York Attorney General uh, Letitia James seizing his assets. So Kevin O'Leary as a businessman could easily see the writing on the wall and what this could mean when you have Democrats seizing hundred plus million dollar assets from their political opponents and what clearly and obviously is a fraudulent case against somebody that they disagree with politically. And on the world stage, it doesn't look good. It makes us look like China. It makes us look like Russia. It makes us look like Venezuela. A bunch of countries that we claim that we don't want to be. And it does not make the United States look like a good place to do business in, especially in New York City, okay? And that's why Kevin O'Leary was sounding off about this, not because he necessarily likes Trump or is a fan of Trump, but it was more about business and what this means for the business community. And Jon Stewart is going to take issue with this, and he's going to basically call out Kevin O'Leary for defending Trump, and I want to react to it. But before we get into it, we have to have a word from the sponsor of this video, Noble Gold. Have you guys taken a good look at the banks lately? Now, on the surface, everything may seem fine, but there's a whole lot more going on underneath. It's like looking under the hood of a car and finding a mess of broken wires and parts. The parts are loans for homes, cars and the credit cards that we use they're all hitting record highs it's really scary when you think about it why risk your money for a tiny five percent when things are so shaky this is where noble gold can help they're like that friend that knows all about how to keep money safe they suggest gold and silver oldies but goodies in the finance world plus they've got a sweet deal a one-fourth ounce gold standard coin this month if you qualify that sounds pretty cool right 
If you're curious, just give them a call at 877-646-5347. That is 877-646-5347. And don't worry, it's just a chat, no pressure. They will help you figure out if gold and silver are right for you. Or you can visit noblegoinvestments.com and take the first step towards a safer, more secure financial future. And just remember, there's a risk with every investment and there's no guarantee of any kind. And the attorney general of New York knew that Trump's property values were inflated because when it came time to pay taxes, Trump undervalued the very same properties. It was all part of a very sophisticated real estate practice known as lying. <laughs> So the judge calculated that the value that he gained from the lying with interest was around $454 million. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, that sounds pretty straightforward. Whatever gains you got from lying, you have to pay back. Well, that's because you're a f***ing idiot. Let, let, no, just, <laughs> if you knew anything about business, if you had an MBA, you know, you're a f***ing idiot. We're talking about a victimless crime. They find uh, an ordinance or a law that has never been used ever before in anyone else. He's committed bank fraud where there's no victim. It well, makes no it makes no sense. No victims. There was no victim. The ruling is blatantly unfair. That didn't go over very well with the investment community because we're all asking each other, who's next? Ah, who's next? <laughs> the persecuted minority of the investment community. First <laughs> First they came first they came for the arbitrages and I said nothing. <laughs> I was not an arbitrager. And then they came for the quants. Which I could be, I don't know what a quant is. But I am surprised to hear this from Kevin O'Leary, a guy who's such an asshole. Wait. That even the other people on Shark Tank thinks he's an asshole. Now, he's very chill. I'm surprised to hear that he's so chill about overvaluing something that he thinks is victimless, because when someone tries to do that to him... Which one of you do I absolutely tear to pieces now on a $28 million valuation? You think this is worth $10 million? Absolutely. Okay, now I'm gonna rip your pieces. Are you absolutely. out of your mind? Your valuation's insane. Your valuation's crazy. I think that's a crazy valuation. I think your valuation is stinky poo-poo. No, you didn't. <laughs> Canadians are so vulgar. <laughs> How is he not this mad about overvaluations in the real world? Well, because you wouldn't understand, John, because, again, you're not an investor, you're not a businessman, you're also not a bank, that on Shark Tank, uh, when people come to you with BS, right, in regards to their valuations... Um, you know that before you actually do the deal, before you agree to give somebody the money, you can do your due diligence, which is the same thing that the bank was able to do with Trump, right? And, and that's why anybody uh, that is in the investment community, that is in business, uh, this is why they're so upset about what's happening to Trump because everybody knows that you're not going to get a hundred plus million dollar loan from a bank without the bank doing their own due diligence, regardless of what you say, right? It doesn't matter how much you value your pro your property. If the bank does not agree with it, if they say that it's BS, they're not going to give you the loan. Trump was evaluated by the bank, by Deutsche Bank, and they said, okay, uh, based off what you've given us in our own due diligence, our own research, we're going to give you this loan, okay? And they were paid back their loan. The bank knew what they were doing when they gave Trump the money. They have to look into the cash that Trump has on hand. They're going to look into bank account statements. They're going to look into a bunch of things to verify that, okay, these are the assets that he has. We might not necessarily agree with everything he's saying in regards to the valuations, but it's enough for us to feel comfortable giving the loan, right? Same thing with Kevin O'Leary and Shark Tank, okay? Kevin O'Leary can call BS and say, okay, I think this is overvalued, but that doesn't mean that he won't do the deal. He's just going to do the due diligence and sweeten the deal for itself to say, okay, these are the terms in which I'm going to be willing to give you the capital that you're looking for. Again, John Stewart doesn't understand that, right? Um, Kevin O'Leary understands that in the investment world, you don't just give somebody money without your own due diligence, 
So it's really hard to get over on a bank or to get over on an investor because they're going to do their own due diligence. You may disagree in regards to the value of a business. That doesn't mean that um, a investor is being defrauded uh, just because there is disagreement there. If the investor decides to give somebody money, right, based off what they believe uh, the person they're giving the money to can uh, pay back. Okay, or the return on investment that they're going to get. So, yeah, uh, there's no hypocrisy here. John Stewart is trying to find hypocrisy where there's really no hypocrisy <laughs> because Kevin O'Leary is upset because he's saying that, well, again, in the investment world, this is how it works, right? You're going to try to paint your assets in the best light. It's up to the financer, okay, the person that is going to give you the money, the investor, to uh, determine whether or not they believe you, okay, to do their own due diligence and to say, okay, well, I'm going to give you money on these terms based off what I believe that you're worth or what I believe that you can pay back or the merits of your business based off our evaluation. Again, you know, this is not something that I would expect <laughs> a liberal propagandist like John Stewart to understand. Because they are not victimless crimes. First, the banks got paid back at lower interest rates, although to be honest, who gives a shit? Well, again, these are interest rates that they agreed to based off what they did in regards to their due diligence, right? Again, if the banks felt like Trump was BSing, okay, which they could easily determine whether or not Trump was BSing, they could have said, okay, well, we're not going to give you the loan, okay? Or they could say, well, we're going to give you the loan at a higher interest rate, okay? Or we're going to add these terms to the loan based off the fact that we don't completely believe you. But clearly and obviously, the bank was comfortable doing business with Trump. They wanted to continue to do business with Trump because ultimately in the day, they knew that Trump was good for paying back the money. Again, it's not, it, it is a victimless crime, right? Nobody was hurt in this process at all. But second, <laughs> money isn't infinite. A loan that goes to the liar doesn't go to someone who's giving a more honest evaluation. So the system becomes incentivized for corruption. And this is part of a different Trump fraud case, but avoiding taxes hurts all of us. Donald Trump shenanigans cost the city of New York. And to be honest, and let's be frank here, that is money that the city of New York could have used to build more Walgreens. Now, some blocks only have two of them. Or they can use the money to, I don't know, take care of illegals, which is what they tend to to do right which is why I, I don't get mad at any businessman that decides that hey i'm gonna do whatever i gotta do to avoid paying taxes <laughs> because look at what our taxes go towards paying for nonsense right so i, I don't blame trump for doing whatever he got to do to uh avoid paying taxes <laughs> leave it to kevin o'leary to be unaware enough to say the quiet part out loud I hear about the, the so-called victimless crimes, but the laws on the books, falsification of business records in second degree, issuing false financial statements, insurance fraud, conspiracy, and all these different aspects of it, those are actual crimes. I take it your point is that these should not have been prosecuted? Everything you just listed off is done by every real estate developer everywhere on earth in every city. This has never, ever been prosecuted. There is a theory in law that if enough people commit a crime, it automatically becomes legal. You're familiar with the purge, are you not? The f***ing entitled arrogance. I don't know if you know this, but most people just can't commit fraud and expect to face no repercussions, even if everyone's doing it. Yeah, but that's not what Kevin O'Leary is saying. What Kevin O'Leary is saying is that the crimes that they're charging Trump with are arbitrary, right? It is subjective. Like, for example, uh, they're charging Trump with overvaluing his assets. Well, how do, you, how do you determine that he overvalued his assets? Because the value of an asset is subjective. The value of an asset is based off whatever somebody's willing to pay for it okay it's not based off what the government says it's worth it's actually based off what the market says that it's worth okay trump says that hey my property is worth this much on the market this is how much i believe i can sell it for now it's up to the bank to determine whether or not that that's bs or whether that's true it's arbitrary right it's subjective okay so what kevin o'leary is saying is that in the real estate world 
um, every investor is going to try to paint their asset in the best light. They're going to uh, basically say, hey, I can sell my property for this much, even if it might be slightly above what some may consider to be market value, right? And if that's the standard that you're using, then you could go after a lot of people for fraud, okay, or for overvaluing their assets. And again, ultimately, it's up to the bank to determine whether or not they want to take Trump's word for it in regards to what his properties are worth, because they are the ones that uh, have to get paid back, okay? So they have to assess, okay, uh, can we actually really get our money back if Trump fails to pay? Okay, can we go after his assets and sell those assets and be able to get our money back? They determined that, yeah, we can. We, we think that his assets are worth enough, regardless of what he says they're worth. We think that they're worth enough to give him this loan and to get our money back, right? Regardless of what he says. That's what it comes down to. But again, I, I don't expect people like John Stewart to understand. Uh, he's just reading from a script, right? He's reading what his writers told him to say, okay? So he doesn't really understand what he's talking about. He's just saying stuff. Try getting a car loan by saying you have 10 times as much money as you really do, or claim 20 dependents when you have no children, or say you make slightly less money to qualify for food assistance. I will guarantee you there are not just financial consequences for those lies, but criminal ones. But don't tell that to the investment community, because in their minds, in pursuit of profit, there is no rule that cannot be bent. There is no principle that cannot be undercut as long as you and your friends making money and the only immoral practice hold on i'm not done if i could wait if i could raise my chair up i would <laughs> apparently the only immoral practice in the capitalist system is to use that money for people who may need it Fraud, waste, and abuse, people never want to be honest about, but a lot of these parents will, you know, they abuse the system. A lot of them are encouraged to abuse the system. Where do you think the money that you get for food stamps and other things come? Where do, who do you think pays that money, your health care? You're taking their money and you just don't seem to care. The guy who walks out of the store with a bag of food, is he entitled to it? Because food is a necessity and he doesn't have enough of it? You nutrition-needing mother <laughs> Bringing our system to its knees. Stealing is only justified when you already have too much. Again, ama amazing, right? Absolutely amazing. It's funny how, again, he's demonizing uh, somebody like Trump, who's probably paid multiple millions of dollars into the system, right? No, no doubt overall, the amount of taxes that Trump has paid is just is ridiculous to think about, okay? But yeah, he's demonizing Trump because, you know, he's trying to lower his tax liability here and there, right? And that, oh, well, he's doing something that businessmen do in order to try to get favorable loans that, you know, hey, banks can, you know, check out for themselves and determine whether or not they think it's BS, right? Demonizing Trump for that, okay? But yet, again, he's defending people who quite literally don't contribute as much to the system and that are living off of the system, a system that is paid for by the 1%, right? By people like Trump and the middle class, okay? Uh... Yeah, he, he thinks that it is it, it those are two equivalent things, okay? That somebody who quite literally again paid millions into the system trying to lower his his tax liability, he thinks that that is the same as somebody stealing from individuals in supermarkets and living off of the government that don't contribute to the system. Right? Absolutely amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing stuff. Again, leave it up to a leftist to Again, tried to demonize people who actually do work, who are job creators, who are responsible for, uh, you know, these social safety nets that we do have, who do fund these social safety nets. But at the same time, try to give a pass to people who don't really contribute to the system, who are really actually abusing the system. OK, Trump's not abusing the system. Trump is just, um, you know, doing what smart people do right in order to not overpay into a system that. Quite honestly, again, he don't really benefit from that much and is abusive by definition because taxation is theft, right? And I will never, never, ever, ever demonize somebody for trying to avoid paying into what I see ideologically as an abusive system. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.